good evening everybody okay for those who don't know me i am unmesh bhome i am the chairperson of the cpe committee and it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you for this very important session uh, probably the hot topic uh, nowadays on withholding taxes and the double taxation avoidance agreement uh, impacts for most of the businesses who have interactions with the group companies or the suppliers or the customers overseas before we begin this event uh, we would like to thank his majesty sultan uh, haitham bin tarik our sponsor cbfs dr rajesh is representing cbfs for us our platinum sponsor gold sponsor silver sponsors and our corporate members as well uh, may i request all of you to please stand up uh, for the icia moto song please yae shasukte shujagrati ಯಶಸ್ಸುಕ್ತೇಶುಜಾಗ್ರತಿಶುಜಾಗ್ರತಿಮೃತಮುಚ್ಚ thank you all please be seated now i request uh, our vice chairman uh, c a jim to please deliver the welcome address thank you nimesh ji uh, on behalf of uh, chairman c a sajeev surendran i welcome all of you to this uh, event uh, after covid we were meeting uh, we had a couple of events but the attendance was not that great but today we have a good number of uh, attendees uh, i think our superstar uh, gaurav kapoor is attracting the crowd today so Uh, good to see you all uh, dr rajesh welcome uh, we have uh, a couple of uh, past year person also good to see that uh, i would like to brief uh, some of the activities which is going on which is under uh, uh, in process uh, regarding the chapter uh, one is the cfo and uh, accountant training program which we are planning to conduct uh, in association with the uh, ministry of commerce and the chamber of commerce and industry uh we have requested some of the members to uh mentor the joint hands to mentor this uh, omani young states and we have seen lot of uh, uh, people came up, came towards this and we are expecting uh, more members who are having at least more than 15 years of experience to be mentors to uh, omani young states uh, in addition to that uh, we have onam celebration coming up september 3rd we are planning for a grand onam celebration it's a celebration after long time so uh, ambassador excellency amit narang agreed to uh, join us so we are looking forward to meet you all with the families please join uh, another thing is the world congress of accountants uh, as you are aware it will happen in uh, mumbai in uh, november to this year so we hope that most of you have registered so still the window to op- register is open and chapter is giving uh, 50% discount on the uh, registrations then we are also planning for the international conference uh, which we are expecting to happen in december 9 and 10th so we are finalizing the venues in the planning is in progress so these are the just briefing of the things uh, which is in uh, pipeline so i welcome all of you uh, over to investi thank you thank you ca jim uh i'm i'm <clears throat> happy to announce that our uh, colleagues from sohar are attending the session uh, this is the second time we are doing a live screening for sohar and i would like to thank uh, ca avinash uh, from jindal shadid to sponsor the event thank thank you avinash uh, a big round of applause for the sohar members please okay just couple of updates to the members which jim has covered uh, so we are in the process of finalizing the cp calendar for the year 
so the main question is how can you all be part of it? Like this event, what is being organized is based on the inputs received from the members. What are the topics they want us to cover? Uh, what are the key things they would like us to uh, have CP sessions on? So you can suggest topics. You can be a guest speak speaker if you want to take up any particular topic. You can nominate yourself for the topic of your choice or you can nominate yourself for any panel discussion uh, and you can team up with uh, the experts you believe who have got relevant experience which can be of any benefit to the members. So uh, there is a link shared on WhatsApp group. Those who have not got it maybe can get in touch with us over email or over WhatsApp group so we can again share the link to share your inputs. Uh, this is the award which we have announced uh, in the last event. The member, the paid member who attends the maximum CP events for the period from 20th June to end of October will win the uh, ticket to the, not ticket, the registration to the uh, World Congress of Accountants. So I, I hope you're all tracking that you are attending, attending all the sessions and ensure that your attendances are getting uploaded on the CP website. Uh, we had recently circulated one uh, circular from uh, ICI for the article ship which can be uh, conducted by the members in the uh, country. Uh, there are specific guidelines. Uh, we'll be shortly arranging for a session and a guidance uh, meeting from the uh, institute's office. So those of you who know there are CA students in the country or who want to take up articleship in Oman, uh, they can join the group, connect with uh, uh, Sangeeta ji. Uh, she, she is the chairperson for the Students' Affairs. Uh, World Congress of Accountants, we did announce that we are going to sponsor 50% of the discounted fees. Those who register, I think the deadline is uh, 15 September, right? So those who register before 15 September will be getting the 50% discount of the discounted fees uh, for the registration. It can be virtual or physical as well, whatever mode you prefer. Uh, there's one more uh, program which is being launched, the Omani CFO program. So uh, Muscat chapter in association with the MOCIIP uh, has taken the initiative to share the knowledge of our members who have got relevant experiences uh, to educate and guide the Omani CFOs. So these details have also been rolled out on, rolled out on the WhatsApp group. So please uh, share your name and the topics you would want to cover to, to contribute to the society. Back to the fraternity here. You can connect with us on the Facebook. We have got a Facebook page. Follow us, follow the Facebook page. Send a, a meeting request. Uh, sorry, not a meeting request, a friend request. Uh, same thing with LinkedIn, so you can get the updates. OK, now my favorite one. Uh, you want to have a quick five minutes quiz before Gaurav takes over the session? Yeah? Already? Please, please keep your uh, mobile phones uh, in uh, airplane mode, please. I don't want anybody to Google out anything. So can anybody tell me when did Oman sign its first DTAA and it was with which country? France, UK, uh, can you tell the year also? So I got France, UK, USA, India. Okay, the first one was with France in 1989. Okay, the latest DTA was signed with which country and in which year? Sure, Qatar, which year? But that's not on the website. So my answer is Sri Lanka in 2018. <laughs> so I've gone by the government records, okay. Uh, in which year was the first income tax law issued in the Sultanate? 74? 71? I think you are debarred from asking the next question. <laughs> 71 was the first income tax law. And then linked to this one, there was income tax law for companies which was issued later on. So can you tell me the year in which it was issued? No, it was done in 1981, wherein they incorporated the companies also. Uh, it was only for the uh, proprietorship and the uh, individual ownership companies. Uh, in which year the tax rates were changed recently before COVID and what was the change? 12 to 15%, see, we are all up to date. Uh, 
what is the withholding tax rate? Yeah, generally 10%, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm correct. Okay. There are, depending on the Gaurav will take us through the session, depending on the DTA, I think there can be a change in the uh, right uh, withholding tax rates, which is beneficial to the uh, SAC. Okay. So uh, thank you all for being patient with my quiz. I think every time uh, I, I like to have some session on uh, quiz before we start the main session. Uh, moving on, I would now request uh, C.A. Jai to introduce our speaker, C.A. Gaurav Kapoor. Good evening, everyone. Today we have our very own subject matter expert, uh, C.A. Gaurav Kapoor. Um, Mr. Gaurav Kapoor is chartered accountant from ICI as well as law graduate from Guru Nanak Dev University. Gaurav is currently employed as text director with PwC Oman. He started his career in 2005 as practicing text lawyer and became qualified in 2007. After qualifying, Gaurav started his own firm. However, soon he got an overseas opportunity and relocated to Muscat in 2009 for new beginnings. In Muscat, he started with big four firm and worked almost four years before moving to PwC. Currently, he is director as well as tax reporting and strategy leader for Oman. During his experience in corporate tax, international tax, m and VAT and GST, and inbound advisory in Middle East and Asia, Gaurav has worked with clients across all industries, including oil and gas, government, sovereign wealth funds, financial services, construction, and the list is long. He has led several different teams and his outlook on leadership is making others better because of your presence and making sure that impact lasts in your absence also. He has served as chairperson for student affairs and professional development for the Muscat chapter of ICI in financial year 21-22. And currently he is secretary of Muscat chapter for FY 22-23. A role he is thoroughly enjoying and managing effectively along with his primary role at PwC, which is very evident from all his efforts in the events. He's also con he also has also conducted many seminars and training sessions on various text related topics in Oman and internationally. Outside work, Oman is, oh, Gaurav is huge sports orient, sports enthusiastic. Friends view him as energetic and full of spirit with a passion of his career that is marked by his success to date. So with huge round of applause, let us welcome our speaker, C.A. Gaurav Kapoor. So first of all, thanks to the Muska chapter for giving me this opportunity to come and uh, speak on a very interesting uh, <laughs> No, I, I was out of the whole organization uh, for this event for the obvious reason that I was the speaker. That, that was the, uh, the reason behind it. Thanks to uh, few of our Omani friends here as well who have joined. And uh, thanks to the Sohar uh, members joining live uh, from Sohar. This is the first time we are doing it uh, from through a Zoom platform and I hope this is successful and we continue to do it for future events as well. Um, based on also at the time of registration, there was a lot of questions that were submitted, which were both uh, at a very starting level as well as a few complex questions as well. So the presentation will try to cover uh, all the aspects. Of course, if there is anything missed, you can always um, ask questions during the presentation or in the end as well. Uh, we have people from tax authorities as well. We have people from uh, the taxpayer side. We have people from the consultant side. So just as a disclosure, the views expressed here are purely personal. It may, may not conquer with the tax authorities or with the taxpayers' view. <laughs> I said purely personal, nor with the consultants as well. So, uh, because um, you read a sentence now or anywhere, different people can interpret it in different ways. And it will continue how much we evolve in life, right? So that says all, all about communication, right? So let's start, and then we'll see how we land up. I think we have uh, 
two hours, but we have last 30 minutes dedicated to Q&A as well. But as I said, you can ask in between as well. Of course, I am there. These are the various uh, topics that we will cover. Uh, let, let's start. I think uh, Unmesh ji has laid down the foundation of uh, the rate of withholding tax, which he said generally 10 percent. We will know about wh why he meant with that as well. So what is withholding tax? Anyone? Basically, it's a way of uh, remittance tax when you are sending money outside Oman for a certain services which you have acquired and there are a qualified services on which it is being deducted and there are exceptions to it. Yes, that's also one element of it. So, okay. so government feels that, you know, there are some entities who are outside Oman earning income from the Oman. So they don't, they want to bring them into the tax net and government don't want to miss out on that opportunity of earning tax. So basically this is a way of uh, getting money collected from the outside Oman people or entities. Yes. So, so this is the whole gist of withholding tax. I will just say it's a tax deducted at source because some of the things that you said were very particular in terms of, so it's just a tax deducted at source. So source is the where you earn the income and from where the payment for that income is generated. The other things whatever you said is also true but that is very specific to a local legislation which is the Oman legislation. Different countries can have different legislations. For example, as most of you are from India, you would know that in India, even local payments attract withholding tax. So those are very specific, country specific rules. Withholding tax rate, in Oman, the withholding tax rate is 10%. That's a flat 10% on the gross payments. When it is due? So, any payments that you make during a particular month, the withholding tax has to be remitted to the Oman tax authorities within 14 days of the next month. Now, there are few very peculiar conditions which all of you have said that need to be fulfilled to qualify a payment to be deducted for withholding tax. The first condition is specified payments. The payment has to be a payment out of the five or seven categories, which we will list down later in the presentation. So its payment has to be a specified payment. Payment has to be made to foreign tax residents. Payments are made by enterprise or basically a taxpayer defined under the Oman income tax law. It also applies to ministries or autonomous authorities. This, this element is important because when I said taxpayers as per Oman income tax law, some of the ministries may not be taxpayers, but they are still obliged under the withholding tax to deduct payment if they are making these specified payments. And last but not the least, and this is very important because it's linked to the previous condition that payment has to be a payment to a foreign entity. Many times a foreign entity would be working in Oman and thereby because of that they end up creating a permanent establishment in Oman. There are three rules by which an entity can create a permanent establishment. It could be through a fixed place of business, through a dependent agent and through service PE. So there are detailed rules for under each of these three categories under which a permanent establishment can be created. We are in today's session, we are not going in detail what is PE and how it is created. But these, this is important because if you have a PE, then and the income that you are paying to that particular PE is being declared by that PE in Oman as part of their tax filing, then you don't need to deduct withholding tax. And this last condition just clarifies that. If you are making the payment to the same PE, but that PE is not declaring that income in their Oman tax returns, you are still liable to deduct withholding tax. Yes. So in conclusion to all of this, it is very clear that in uh, application of the Oman tax law, either a withholding tax would apply or a corporate tax would apply on a certain payment. Except 
there can still be few payments which are not sorry, specified payments, then on those categories of income there will be no withholding tax and of course there can be incomes where corporate tax may not apply it. Just one question, like can a company having a CR in Oman be not a PE of Oman? No. If you have a CER, you become, uh, you are a taxpayer in Oman. Okay, so then automatically it is not it is a, it, then it's not a PE. It's a it falls under the Omani company tax company pay. directly. Yes. Oh. Yeah, CR becomes a local Omani company. PE specific to okay. The one of the biggest differences between a PE and a Omani company is the legal presence. When I say legal presence, a PE will not have a commercial registration, but it is still a taxable presence. Fine, uh, I can say, yeah, that is a broader definition and it can be clubbed within that as well. Technically, there can be some differences, but for current discussion purposes, we can say yes. Okay, just uh, a bit of history into the Oman tax law, more and more specific to withholding tax. So, as Mishji said in the quiz, the first law was issued in 1971, but that 1971 law did not have any provisions on withholding tax. Then that law on the company's tax was issued in 1981. And then in 1981, also there, the provisions for withholding tax was not there in the first law that was issued. So anybody knows when was the withholding tax provisions were first introduced? 1989? So, one of the one of the amendments that are written is the hint <laughs> so the these uh, 94 96 97 97 2000 2003 these are all the amendments to the oman corporate income tax law that has happened over the years until 2009 when a new income tax law was issued which is currently on Yeah, so the first introduction of withholding tax happened in 1996. Right? And then at that time, there were these four categories of income on which withholding tax was applicable. Royalties, research and development, management fees, and rental of equipment. So these were the four primary categories on which withholding tax was applicable. In 2009, a full-fledged new income tax law was issued and they merged the corporate tax, the, the tax on the companies as well as tax on establishments and consolidated one income tax law was issued. And under that, again, there are four categories. The only category that they merged was they not removed it. The rental of equipment was also earlier there within the definition of the term royalty. So they removed it as independently and they put up a new uh, separate category of use or right to use of computer software. So this was the change that happened in 2009. So applicable from tax years 1st January 2010 and onwards. Then the first amendment and, and there were you know the consultants uh, values was uh, suddenly increased when the amendments of 2009 was made or sorry 2017 was made and three more categories of in uh, specified payments were introduced. One was dividend, one was interest, and the last is performance for services. So we'll discuss all of these in detail as we go further. When you say that uh, they have removed the rental of equipment and they merged it with something else, are you referring to the right to use of assets, for example? Can we say the right to use is replaced no. with the rental okay. of equipment? The definition of the term royalty in 1996 itself also included rental of equipment within it yes. and it was also a separate category. Okay. So, it, there was no need to mention it as a separate category. So, they removed it from separate category but technically it is already included within the definition of the term royalty. Royalty. Okay. So, the fourth word that came in in 2009 was, it was no point use or right to use computers. So effectively, there is no change in the 
Yeah, the wordings have changed, but not in the application. <laughs> Mainly, this whole act emanated from the oil and gas sector, if you look at it. And that's where all those categories got covered. Yeah. And after that, the other private sector, the minor payment sector. Yeah. If you look at royalties or rental equipment, at that time, mainly oil and gas sector payments have to be agreed. taxed. That's the reason. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. agreed. The original, even in 1971 or in 1981 onwards, the original motive was to start from the oil and gas sector. Yes, it has widened. There were reasons for, in nine, 2009 law, uh, rationalization of the tax rate was also done for the first time. Before that, there were different tax rates for different types of taxpayers. So all that was removed as well. And then, uh, 14th uh, ministerial decision 14 of 2019 uh, was also issued, which only clarified the provisions of the previous amendments of 2017. And uh, we will run through that as well when we go in detail of the specified payments. Uh, I already discussed this, that why PE determination is important, because if you have a PE and you are making payment to the PE, then no withholding tax would apply. So in that case, it is important to know or check with the foreign company if you are making a payment in case they have a PE. Then your job becomes much easier. You don't need to deduct and pay the withholding tax. So we discussed that these are the three. We will not go in detail for today's session. So these are the five categories. Why I say five? Because interest and dividend and management fee and performance of services are part of the same uh, as per the tax law. But we will go even uh, discuss in detail as we go. So first is royalties. Royalties definition under the Oman income tax law is in line with the definition under OECD and in line with the definition under most of the tax treaties. So use or right to use intellectual or uh, property rights, patents, trademark, licenses, all that is also covered. And last is one which I was referring to, rental of equipment, use or right to use, industrial, commercial or scientific equipment. So all types of equipments are covered within this definition of royalties. In addition, it also includes information concerning industrial, commercial or uh, scientific experience. And last but not the least, granting of rights for um, exploration of mining or, or any other natural resources. So this is the principal definition of royalty. Just before I go further, we mentioned that there were seven categories or five categories. I'll come to this question. I just put the questions now. You can think over as I speak, but we'll come back to this question in next five minutes or seven minutes. Is why categorization of a payment in any of these categories is important if the tax rate is same as 10%. Remember, we said tax rate is 10%. And then we have different categories, but it is significant important that under which category your payment falls. It has to be identified. Not only from a compliance perspective that you tick the right box in the form. So we'll come back to this question. You can think over as we discuss this further. Consideration for use or right. So the royalty definition which we just discussed is prescribed in the Oman income tax law. So we have clarity. Whereas consideration for canning on research and development is not defined. So whatever I'm saying, this is from common practice, common uh, experience, or some experience from other jurisdictions having similar provisions. So as research and development would say, as a common man, it is that if you develop a new product, or you develop a new service, or any technology, all that is covered within the definition of the term research and development. Consideration for the use or right to use computer software. Again, a term which is not defined. And when it was originally introduced in 2017, it again had, uh, sorry, 2009, it had some bit of its um, ambiguity in it. The, the, it has been sorted out over the years through practical experience or uh, various decisions which the tax authorities have issued to the corporates or the tax the taxpayers from time to time. So I'll just give few examples so that uh, all those gray areas which you might have doubt is cleared. 
first is transfer of copyright whenever you buy a computer or uh, software the main point that was being argued between the taxpayers and the tax authority was i have bought the software i have purchased the software which is perpetual in existence so it's a purchase of a good for me so it should not fall within the definition so that was the main argument from a taxpayer angle but if you read through most of the licenses of the uh, uh, computer software there is an element of license or amc which we called annual maintenance charges which is embedded within it so as the first three which is transfer of copyright or as well as site license etc these will most likely to be fall within the definition when you have to pay make regular payments to keep the license in working condition that means it has a specified life and therefore it will fall under this definition the moment if you say that it is perpetual you can possibly argue that it does not fall under the category of use or right to use computer software but then if you recall when we read the definition of royalty it has patent trademark license all that embedded within it as well so a license of a computer software is then falls under the royalty or most likely to be fallen under the royalty and last but not the least is on the services the amc part which is also very prominent uh, practically for corporates to have it perfectly fine to argue that it's not a product it's not a license it's a service so from 2009 till 2017 the corporates have been arguing and successfully arguing and there was a basis for that that no withholding tax is there on services so please do not ask us to pay on the amc part but when 2017 amendments came services were included so this falls not in the computer software category but under the services category so withholding tax would still apply so yeah it's a yeah, it's evolving process but in this case it was the clear amendment of the law in 2017 and the new categories that were introduced in that year okay so next is payment for management or performance of services i'll just touch upon the management part or management fees etc which is actually again not defined in the law from a common perspective i will just say and it will be vary from case to case and it can be subjective to different taxpayers if a critical management function is performed that can be termed as a management fees in the agreement you write management fees or fees for example i i can say if depending on whoever is paying a consultant they will say you you enter an agreement but you define it in a way that it is services so till 2017 it was not applicable you will say no no it is not management fees but it is only services but in 2017 when services is included this ambiguity or this imbalance between the tax uh, authorities and the taxpayer or the tax law and its interpretation was also clarified so as of today whether you say management fees or services or supervision services or whatever you say it it falls within the ambit of the withholding tax but i'm just giving you that previous to the ambiguity being ruled out the the words defined in the agreement or the intent of the agreement was very important to understand whether it is a management fees or not a management yeah so i'm not touching vat here uh, otherwise there's a uh, endless uh, discussion we will go into so even when you ask questions later on please refrain from asking any so then services was as i said was introduced in 17 but there is still today no definition of the word services that was provided for in 2017 it was a common understanding that anything which is not goods will be termed as services and then in 2019 when the ministerial decision was issued there were very specific seven categories which was prescribed which will not fall under the definition of the word services apart from that everything else will be termed as services so those seven categories were 
participating in organizations conferences so if you your organization has offered you to go to dubai denmark uk or anywhere to attend a conference so all the expenses or the um, uh, expense to register for that cross con uh, conference would not be liable to withholding tax under the category services what i say it has to be clearly in that way not liable to tax under the category services if it falls something else you have to take care of second trainings if any overseas trainings are there where you send your employees and to pay for that training courses those uh, will also not fall under the definition of services i'll come to that that is a very very critical and i know that and when i come to seventh and there is a slide specific i'll cover both of them together that that is there and it is uh, covered in this uh, just 3 minutes more right the third is transportation because these are more or less understandable and acceptable parameters and i think the audience would have least questions and i know based on the questions we got at the time of registration i'm trying to cover most of that and will focus on those parts more then transportation and shipping of goods and insurance on that so specific for freight forwarders or th that industry then air tickets and uh, accommodation so this was specific to the travel industry so uh, for every exemption here mentioned there was a thought process and that's why it took tax authorities 2 years to issue the executive regulations to understand the industry specific issues industry specific meetings were happening have happened during that time based on which these uh, specific exclusions from services was detailed in 2019 the next is board of directors meeting um reinsurance because for uh, insurance is fine you do locally but reinsurance is you know the, the objective of reinsurance is to reduce your risk and not to earn a service uh, from outside so so there is a rationale right against each and every uh, exemption from the definition of the word services then comes this last one services performed in connection with an activity or property outside oma so so i'll just give one perspective to the place of performance so what happened in 2017 when the services was first introduced and it had a great impact because every every company would take some sort of services from outside of them right so suddenly their cost will increase by 10% so what happened is they went back to the tax authorities and started asking uh, what would you mean by the term services what are the conditions etc etc so one common theme that came out at that point of time was the services if are performed wholly outside oman wholly outside oman not partly also in that case those specified services withholding tax would not be applicable and this was also there in the faq section of the tax authorities and there were a number of case um, rulings or confirmations because there's no concept of ruling so let me not use that word a lot of confirmations which was seeked by the taxpayers was confirmed by the tax authorities in writing to them that services performed wholly outside of oman withholding tax would not apply with the passage of time this interpretation kept on changing then in 2018 in march okay just before that in december or somewhere in december january depending upon when you came to know the the tax authorities removed the faqs from their website and then in 2000 um, 18 march they issued letters to some of the taxpayers or consulting firms uh, that withholding tax would apply on all types of services irrespective of the place of performance of service right so earlier many companies took a stand fine this for example amc your amc is sitting in india or sitting in singapore providing from there you say they never come to oman so service is provided from outside oman so i don't have to pay withholding tax but from 18 onwards when they removed this uh, wherever you perform the services so withholding tax would apply then in 2019 this point number 7 came in and then people started to interpret it 
then are tax authorities confirming their 2017 position, right? When they say services performed in connection, right? The word connection is very important with an activity or a property outside of market. So there is a difference and a clear difference between this and the 2017 interpretation. Here the tax authorities wanted to give benefit specific if you, if the corporate, because if you remember the, the, the corporate tax, it's a global taxation. So you earn income even outside Oman, you have to pay tax here. So they wanted to give some benefit to those who have branches or PEs outside Oman. So to give that benefit, they said that because based on the legislation of that country, you may, may not have the ability to open a bank account in that country. So the payments for your PE, say in UAE, just for example, you are making from Oman. But it is benefit for your activity in UAE, right? So therefore, they gave very specific exemption in number seven here that withholding tax would not apply. But this is important and very important that it was not dependent on place of performance of service. It was linked to your activity and your property, not linked to the service provider. No, it could be that you are, uh, you are taking service from Oman for an activity in UAE, that can also be possible. Service provider can sit anywhere. But there's a clear demarcation between 2017 when it was linked to the service provider and 2019 when it is linked to the taxpayer. Yes, of course, when, when, when you write a line and you have uh, some sort of precedent, uh, the interpretational differences can come. Of course, they can come. There's no doubt about it. Okay. So performance of services, some of the practical observations, some of those I just spoke of as well especially when services and goods are combined, right? So you have one contract for supply and services both. In that situation, it becomes very difficult because it's not only to uh, understand, yes, service has been provided or not, but you have to quantify it as well, right? So if you have one contract, which is both for supply and service, it is very difficult for you as well as the tax authorities subsequently to quantify how much if it is for a million dollar contract, how much is related to goods and how much is related to services. So from this experience perspective, it is always advisable that contract can still be same, but the payments for different categories are clearly laid down. And if it is not laid down in the contract for whatever reason, you make sure that when the invoices are issued, they clearly give the description so that there is clarity to you as well as to the tax authorities that withholding tax is applicable or not. Because each tax is different. By applying a tax, whether you should have applied or not, does not mean that you will get away with the other tax. Second, uh, we have discussed this as well, uh, the interpretation of performance of service during the course of time, 17, 19 in the current position. And last is uh, the treaty applications. So remember I said this question, that why the categorization of a payment is important in each category. So any answers on that? So each category of specified payment under a tax treaty has a different rate. So if you want to apply for a benefit, you need to first make it clear that under which category it is applicable and therefore go to that particular country's treaty and that section to see whether a treaty benefit is available or not. We will come to that, we will come to that. I just asked a rationale for there, right? Whether we come less or more, we will just come to that. It's, it's, it's very easy. You know? So dividend, so we mentioned that um, dividend withholding tax was introduced in 2017. Uh, we also know that in 2019, the tax authorities, or not the tax authorities, but uh, through a royal directive, withholding tax on dividend and interest was suspended for three years and which was extended by another two years by the, uh, by another royal directive for Vision 2040, right? 
Whether it will be further extended or not, we have people from tax authorities who can share some views if, if they. <laughs> so, but for sake of uh, discussion and completion, we'll discuss that because from 24, 5th of May 24, it will become applicable. So, you should know the provisions. First, uh, the law clearly just says three elements on dividend withholding tax. We know what is dividend and it is, dividend itself is not defined because dividend is there in the uh, commercial companies law. So, the same definition would apply. But it says joint stock companies, which is SAOC or SAOG and investment firms or investment funds. So, if those type of companies pay with uh, dividend, withholding tax would apply. So, therefore, all other types of taxpayers, whether sole proprietors, partnerships, branches, PEs, LLCs, SPCs, withholding tax would not apply. Clear? So, th there is no ambiguity in this. And then, based on GCC economic agreement, there is just one do they distribute dividends yeah. for LLC and PE? Uh, yeah, LLC do distribute dividends. Now, I know in the Arabic text of the, the income tax law or this commercial companies law, they term it as profit sharing rather than uh, dividends. But just for clarity, that why it is not applicable can be termed in two ways, right? So, because this question was there in 2017 and it was then clarified in 19. The point was that if they do not, and, and this was tax authority saying in 2017 as well. So, LLCs were not paying in 17 onwards, irrespective of the clarity. That dividend is never declared by these corporates. Yes. So, if that be the situation, why they mentioned only these three elements? And if it is these three elements is, is mentioned, so to avoid that doubt, it is there. For, but this is for specific to LLCs or SPCs. But of course, branches and PEs, there is no concept of dividend at all. It is only a profit repatriation to the head office. That, that is the logic behind of not uh, applying with that, uh, profit distribution by LLC. Profit distribution by LLC uh, may be dragged into this, this definition. Uh, why this dividend on uh, like SOG was... Uh, uh, because uh, when this law came, uh, CMA went running up to the top uh, and uh, like uh, CMA represented that uh, if you are putting uh, withholding tax on dividend, then it will hurt uh, the economy. So, it was actually the hard work of CMA that uh, a Royal direct, uh, 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 Directive came. So, uh, like uh, that, as you rightly said, uh, I'm very confident it will be extended. I mean, tax authority guys uh, knows better, but <laughs> let me tell you, I'm very confident it will be extended. But uh, maybe it may not be extended, but I'm confident. Uh, regarding LLC, I think, uh, as you rightly said, that uh, uh, there can be two interpretations. But uh, if uh, my understanding, which can be completely wrong, I'm not a tax guy, uh, if an LLC company is remitting the profit share outside Oman, that is not protected. I mean, only SOG companies are protected, but I think uh, even in the Royal Directive, there is no mention of this. If it can be interpreted that the uh, that uh, profit remitted by an LLC company to uh, an overseas owner uh, is, is in the form of dividend, uh, then I think uh, Maybe it it it, uh, it may be difficult for LLC. No, because uh, the executive regulations say that withholding tax is applicable only for joint stock and investment fund. It did not specify LLC as well. But regulation cannot override the royal decree. Royal decree doesn't say that. So if uh, it becomes, I mean, the tax authority guys are there. Somehow, like uh, I happen to be involved in uh, framing of regulations, but so. Uh, if I mean you, you have read it more than me. Uh, when you look at the royal decree, it doesn't say this. Yeah. But in regulation, it says this. And when I read this, so, I mean regulation cannot say something which royal decree didn't uh, want to say. Exactly. So can this be disputed? I mean that is why I just wanted to put it on the but table for discussion. But executive regulations do clarify, right? So they 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 clarified this. So if we say that 
the, the royal decree was not clear on this, the executive regulations provide clarity on that particular provision. They are not overruling the royal decree, but they are providing a clarity on what is yeah. applicable and not applicable. Like that, in that case, you will say services, executive regulation will not override it, right? But then these exemptions are provided in the executive regulations and not yeah. in the royal decree. Royal decree says services. Then will everything will still continue? No, right? Yeah. You, you go into the specific exclusions, which is a clarity provided on a royal decree provision. So if they contradict, yes, then I can agree, the royal decree will prevail. But if they provide a clarity, then that is the purpose of executive regulation. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And then last but not the least, this is also important because of the GCC economic agreement, uh, all the GCC individuals are treated at par. So if you are distributing dividend to a company or an individual, which is a GCC individual or 100% owned by uh, GCC individuals, then withholding tax would not apply. It's, uh, practically, it might be a bit challenging for the, the local companies to prove that this payment is being made, but if it is possible through the corporate documents and the ownership of those documents that it is held 100% by GCC uh, individuals, and we have seen that in practice there are a uh, few corporates that work in this way, but very less applicability. Not Same applies to that country as well. So if a UAE national is given a particular treatment in UAE, the Omani national will be given the same treatment in UAE. Sorry if I, I misunderstood uh, the question. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> okay, fine then. <laughs> I thought. Uh, uh, okay, fine. I thought that it was slightly different. Okay, so that's clear, right? Interest. So, interest also uh, is, is more or less settled now. I think uh, when they defined the word interest, it included everything, whether you say it interest or uh, interest in lieu of interest or trying to define something else in lieu of interest. But I think the important part is the exclusions that have been provided for. It's not, it's not covered because they still say it is not interest, but it's, uh, but they, did not, they do not even say that it is in lieu of interest. So it, it is us who, because of the practical nature of that particular industry, <laughs> no, there's a conflict with the Islamic banking actually. But Islamic banking is out here. They were not, uh, they do not term it as interest first of all. So, yes, we embedded it in, within the uh, costing structure. That's a different concept. But I think the exclusions is important here. And actually the exclusions were provided mainly for the benefit of the uh, local banks here. Right. Uh, or of course, the government, right? So, you know, government issues a lot of uh, uh, SUSUK bonds or also uh, uh, the, the coupons are issued by the Central Bank of Oman from time to time. So that their interest cost is not increased, the, uh, the tax authority specifically uh, excluded them from the exemption of uh, in, uh, applicability of withholding tax on interest. Similarly, all the interbank loans, uh, because the main purpose is to provide liquidity rather than charging or paying interest. Therefore, they, any of those instruments with less than five years was excluded from uh, applicability of withholding tax on interest. And then last, uh, uh, any amount paid by the banks on their deposits uh, will also not be applicable for withholding tax. Any questions on this? So this is specific to, uh, th th there's no exemption from a related party interest payment. This was specific only to the banking industry. Okay, means specifically for an LLC company, if he pays to the foreign banks? Withholding tax is applicable. Currently not applicable because of the Royal ah, Directive, oh, okay. but if the Royal Directive finishes, then it will become a. And the whole purpose of uh, withdrawing, or not withdrawing, but giving this suspension was to continue to attract with, uh, uh, investment in Oman. So it had a non-tax angle. See, each tax law in a country has always two objectives, two primary objectives. One is to collect money to serve for the community. 
but then also it has whether you want to attract or not attract uh, foreign investments. So how you frame that provisions is very important. Before I go to double tax agreements, just one oh, thing I will. Sorry, one question actually. If I have a, let's say I have a property in Dubai and that property, uh, I took a loan against that property and I have a company which is a related party company here and we are paying the interest of, let's say, uh, normally we are not paying, but sometimes we are short of cash. So we are paying the EMIs of that loan. So that interest payment with holding tax will apply. So you have a property, that property is registered in the name of the company. Actually the owners are the same. Okay, we have a company here, we have a company in Dubai. Okay, but fine, withholding tax would apply. Would apply. Huh? Yes. Except I would just say, okay. if you think of the uh, GCC, uh, you know, economic benefit mm -hmm. and if there is a benefit can be probably equal treatment under that we so can be So it is, uh, we can avoid basically. We have to check that because now the question is you are paying actually to a bank. Uh, no, we are, I mean, you can say so, but we are paying directly to our company first, then they will settle with the bank. Okay, so if you are paying, so again the question is when you are paying, the, the fact pattern is slightly different. When you are paying to your company, mm -hmm. you are paying them as what? As a intercompany transfer. So there's no, no, trans, there's no withholding but, tax on intercompany transfer. Okay. So, so if it is a uh, if it is a direct payment to the bank, then no direct payment to the bank for what? Because you don't have any, so absolutely. you still have to route it through the related part. So okay. how you term see simple tax planning is actually my question was avoidance. if it is a related part. Uh, let's say the property is not making by the loan. Okay, I need to put up some money also from my side, from my company side. So we are considering that money as a related party loan. Okay, giving so, loan, no withholding tax. There is no because of this thing. No, okay. because it's loan. Okay, okay. So then you are charging interest, right? When no, no, no. Uh, loan, okay. One is a bank loan. One is a, the loan which is provided by the shareholders from here to that uh, to a company based in Dubai. So for both the things you are saying, uh, there will be no... You When you pay to the bank mm -hmm. for a loan that is taken by the Oman company, irrespective whether you bought the Dubai property with the same money, but you are paying interest to the UAE bank, you will have to deduct withholding tax. But when it's a transaction with the related party, you are giving loan, so you will charge interest. So it's an income, not an expense, so withholding tax would not apply. Would not be. As let's assume that the, the, the property itself is with the name of the UAE company, and uh, the Omani company is paying interest for that property actually. Can't we use point number seven, which no, is... No, but point I'm asking is, uh, how will they pay interest? They have funded, not taken the fund. So they bought a land or a property in Dubai and uh, with the name of Dubai company, they pay, they pay interest every month or they pay installment for, for that property. They are, the UAE company is in short of uh, the, ca the cash, for example, Oman company will pay on behalf of the Dubai company. Okay. This payment to the bank directly. Okay. I'm just giving an example. If it is if it is directly to the bank for that uh, for that property which is located in Dubai and in the name of the Dubai company, will that attract withholding tax? Or we can use the point number seven, which is uh, services related to a property outside yes. of mine. But that is for services. Uh, this is not a service then. Then this is a interest. Okay. interest. So that's where, again, that question of where the category is becomes important. One more question I have. Uh, usually, um, we have some people who are not in Oman. They are working from India or some other countries. Sales people, particularly. So those peoples, we don't have a uh, formal agreement. It means just like we are not giving visas to them. Okay, They, they are, might have uh, giving the consultancy. So those things, uh, there is a loophole also, okay, but uh, which I will cover later on. But the thing is that, uh, so since uh, somewhere I have read in the DTA that uh, if we have a formal agreement with those employees, those, uh, whatever the payment I am making to those people will not be covered under withholding tax. Simple. We will see whether those are your employees or not. If those are your employees, then withholding tax would not 
because you are paying salary. Correct. If they are not on the company's payroll, that means they do not have visa, etc., then they become third parties, either freelancer, consultant, corporate, withholding tax would apply. In India. In India. Yes. And they are working for me. Yes. Okay. They are on my payroll here. Yes. And I pay salary direct to them. Yes. No, no. withholding tax. No withholding tax. No. That is there, not here, there. <laughs> in India, no, not, yeah, that's the thing, in, in India, not here. They are on, they are on our company payroll, but they are not on Oman visa. Because they are in India, they don't need any no, visa. No, no, no. Yeah, that is the key. So, if you say on our payroll, it has to be assumed that you have the employment contract with them, you have the employment visa with them. If you do not have the employment visa okay i will tell you this is the, very common the, I will, sole, I, the sole purpose is because i don't get the visa exactly okay? that is the reason i'm hiring okay. i will just explain this i will explain this i will yeah. from a related party perspective and this is very common that you take services why i'm saying services it is technically service from your another related party and many corporates do this not only for visa reasons, but also other reasons, because there's a higher cost in one country. So they set up a back office in a country where the cost is less and they take the their own company, right, set up. But the employment contract is not with the Oman company, but with the company in which they are employed, for which they are providing the service. From a, from a withholding tax perspective, this is a service from one related party to another related party. So when you said that they are under my employment contract, I was assuming it is in Oman employment contract, visa, etc. Therefore, it will not apply. Anything but when that fact pattern changes, withholding tax is most likely to apply. Uh, Gauro, suppose that uh, company charges management fees to India, to Oman entity. Hmm. And uh, we pay withholding tax. And the tax authorities, whether he can dissolve the management fees in the corporate tax also? Another clear corporate tax is the tax of the Oman taxpayer. Withholding tax is not the taxpayer, uh, not the tax of the Oman taxpayer. But the it is the foreign company's taxpayer. No, yeah, but the moment I pay withholding tax, it becomes my expense, right? The management fees portion. So he has indirectly agreed that it is my expense. So how this can be charged okay, two times? Okay, okay. So, so two elements we are discussing here. One is whether the deduction of the management fees itself and second, the deduction of the withholding tax of the management fees. Now, management fees, if it is coming from related party, then of course you need to have arm length of transaction, etc. to prove and then there will be no deduction. If it is coming from third party and then of course the tax authorities are unlikely to challenge. Now, the withholding tax is actually, now this is my view, let me be very clear, that it should technically be allowed as a deduction because it's a cost to you, right? But the, the point of the tax authorities is also valid when they say that it is actually a tax for which no deduction can be given because it's a foreign company's tax. So that's a solution to this that you have the complete expense invoice rather than you have to gross up and then do it. Okay, the last question for on, uh, <clears throat> withholding tax. Yeah. Uh, typical scenario, especially in the GCC region, we'll have a lot of branches in Oman of the companies in the GCC or outside GCC. So any specific guidance on the payments made by the branch to the head office? How are they treated in withholding tax? My first slide covered it. Withholding tax is applicable. It's applicable. Payments made by taxpayers in Oman. The branches, the P are taxpayers of Oman. Okay, let's move on to double tax agreement. So, just before I start on specific to say anything, the point here is double tax agreement is not compulsory to be used. It is voluntary. You want to use, you use it. You don't want to use, you just ignore it. Simple. So that means you will use it only if it is to your benefit. Otherwise, you will not use it. 
sometimes you may still take a contrary stand and there are multiple exceptions, but that I leave it to the tax planning. So, Oman uh, tax law provides specific uh, rules in terms of, sorry, uh, any questions from the Sohar team so far? Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, any, uh, in the hedging arrangement, the differential payment is attractive withholding tax as interest? Uh, okay, so hedging arrangement can, depending upon how it has been defined in the agreement, can either fall in interest element or it can fall under the services category as well. So if you now, depending upon again the agreement, if it is in, it is on the interest element for the current a suspension it would not apply, but it will then apply from 24 onwards if not extended. If it is categorized as services, then withholding tax would apply. Now we have to see the specifics of the agreement to define under which of these two categories it is likely to fall. Whether machinery service provided by the overseas manufacturer, which includes spare part cost also, is attracting withholding tax? you have to se segregate the spare part cost and the service cost. If you do not segregate, the, if and I am the tax authority, I will say pay on the full amount. And Sir, and, uh, my question is uh, interest. You have told us that uh, uh, e e the uh, uh, withholding tax has been suspended. But what about other charges like uh, we have uh, uh, discounting uh, LC charges, discounting charges, the, these and other are, reimbursement. These are most likely to be services and not interest, because you are taking a service from the bank to to which is the credit worthness of uh, credit worthness of your corporate to take avail that service. Another That's question is like a, 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 like if many services are uh, RCM is applicable. So uh, we uh, so uh, the the withholding tax calculation will include the RCM also. Uh, no, you don't need to include the RCM within it. So uh, there are uh, so, like we have a branch or uh, we have a, a company here, and uh, uh, there and our uh, and its parent company is incurring some expenditure in Oman on behalf of that company, and that parent company is in like UAE. So, uh, the, the company in, Yon, uh, in Oman is reimbursing the expenses incurred by the parent later on when if, it receives the, the money like that. So, if, that kind of reimbursement is uh, withholding tax is applicable? You need to go back and see what is the specifically the payment under the reimbursement. And if it, it falls within the categories of specified payment, withholding tax would apply. You can't take the safeguard of reimbursement and not pay withholding tax? No, like uh, they have a uh, paid salary to Omani employees of the company and uh, like that. But we have to ultimately pay outside uh, Oman to the parent entity. Pay it from Oman, you pay it to UAE and the UAE company paid it. So do you have then reimbursing them? Fine, it's still a salary element. So it's fine, no withholding tax would apply. But you have to prove that full with the documentation that for this reason it had to do in this particular way. The onus is on the SSC. Yeah, yeah this is Anup here. If a Omani LLC company takes a loan from a foreign bank and pays interest to the foreign bank, is withholding tax applicable on that? It is applicable, but currently suspended. <laughs> Currently suspended. So when the uh, is suspended after which date? Fifth uh, of May, two thousand twenty-four. Okay, thank you. One more question. Uh, so one more question. Uh, my name is Deepak Adnani. Uh, I have a question. Suppose we are ha having an agent outside Oman for handling our export sales, and we pay him commission. Is that taxable? You have paid to whom? I am appointing an agent. Okay. Yes, it would apply. Omar. It would apply. It would apply because he, he also clearing goods and everything. It's a commission paid to him. Yes, it is. Yes, it is a commission. It's a service. Service for 
selling your goods or or bringing business. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Anup again, one more question. Suppose when you are recruiting a uh, person in Oman by a recruitment firm situated, situated outside Oman. Yes, it is applicable. It's a service. It is a service. So we have to pay uh, withholding tax on the services, right? Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. Like let's. What, what I have understood for the withholding tax is that the simple principle, if I am taking it as a deduction, it has to be offered as income by the other party, correct? If it is not happening, it should withholding tax should happen. That's I think the spirit uh, you have to look at every yeah, time. Yeah, spirit, but still within the category. within the limits and the exemptions. Okay. So let's move on to the double tax. So I said the late the uh, background already, and this is the specific Article 120, where it provides the the tax authorities the right okay. to engage with the foreign companies' governments to enter into double taxation avoidance agreement. Just before moving in and trying to understand the overall flow, which will summarize the whole, um, you know, the concept from a double taxation avoidance agreement perspective, uh, let's discuss how a double taxation avoidance agreement becomes applicable. And why I am saying so that it is very important, because remember when Mish asked one question in the quiz, what was the latest DTA sign? So there was one answer on Qatar. And he said, no, it's Sri Lanka, right? So the, the point here is whether the treaty is effective or not. So th his answer, question was signed, Qatar is signed. It, it is not effective, that's a different reason, right? But you can take benefit only and only when a tax treaty becomes effective. So there is a clear democratic process from signing and effectiveness of the tax treaty. So just, it's not there in the slide because since that came up in the, in the question, so for everyone's benefit, let's just quickly discuss what are the various steps. No, no, I'm saying from the, from the perspective of how a tax treaty becomes effective. Right? So the first element is two countries governments meet and they sign an agreement saying the tax treaty will be in place for between us. So that's exactly happened last year towards the end of last year when His Majesty and uh, uh, His Majesty from Qatar and Oman both met. I think they met in Qatar and where they signed that there is a tax treaty that will be agreed between both the countries. So that's the first step. What would be the second step? No, that, that was done. So that signing included the draft agreement as well. So that is the first step. So tax authorities did the work beforehand. They prepared like the MOU, right? The MOU is done and everything is just uh, signed later on. Uh, yeah, so once uh, the two countries uh, head or authorities meet, they, they sign that tax agreement will be signed then they come back to their respective countries and based on their local country's legislative process, they pass that tax treaty as a resolution. For Oman, issuance of royal decree is the process. For India, the parliament has to pass and then president has to sign. In Canada, it is different. In US, it is different. So the, the, the sentence or the key words are the, the the respective country's re legislative process has to be passed to approve that uh, treaty. So, Oman has done that and the tax treaty is already published in the official gazette. So, that is one step and then same has to be completed by Qatar as well, which has not happened as far as I am aware of. So, say that happens tomorrow. So that is the second step that gets complete. But treaty does not come into existence. The Oman authorities will have to go back to the Qatar authorities and notify that they have completed the process. Again, I am not sure whether that is done or not. Same, the Qatar authorities 
have to notify to the Oman authorities that they have also completed the legislative process as per their country's legislative process. No. <laughs> Once this process is done, then the tax treaty defines when it will become into enforce. It is already defined in the treaty. It could be the date when both countries or the last notification happens. It could be the date from three months, six months from the last legislative process or it could be from the beginning of the next year. So, it is defined within the tax treaty when it will become effective. So, this is how a tax treaty becomes effective. So, once the tax treaty becomes effective, then you can avail the benefit, not before that. And I am very true because I have seen people started taking benefit under Qatar when it is not effective. So, I am giving tax authorities that they can investigate what are the payments to Qatar now. <laughs> I am here, I said, I, I am here as individual today, so I, am, I will try to benefit both of the parties. <laughs> okay, so let us focus on the flow and I think this will then make clear for today's that how the tax treaties benefit you have to consider. The first point is you have to see if the payment is made outside Oman or not. If the payment is made within Oman, no need to think anything, withholding tax would not apply. And if yes, payments made are subject to Omani tax law and withholding tax law, which are those five categories. If it is no, thank you, no, withholding tax would apply. No, no, fifth one is interest and dividend, which is currently suspended, but <laughs> then if it is yes, then you can see if you want to take the benefit, if there is a DTA available. If there is no DT available, then you have to pay 10 percent withholding tax. Then you have to see the effectiveness of the double tax treaty. If it is effective, then we go to the next step. If it is not effective, you pay 10 percent withholding tax. And if it is effective, you do not take the benefit by default. You still have to go through the administrative process. Uh, of claiming the benefit. But before that, you have to see whether there is a benefit available for you or not. And you will take benefit only if the rate prescribed is less than 10 percent. If the rate prescribed is 10 percent or more, better 10 pay 10 percent and just forget about the tax fee. And if the benefit is available, then you go to the last point that you apply the benefit and uh, take the relief from the tax authorities and do not pay withholding tax. So, which category? <laughs> Service category is 15 percent, 15, 1, 5. Yeah. So, uh, I will just, uh, you know, this is not an, I, I, it is there in under Oman India tax treaty. So, the point is the tax rate under Oman India tax treaty for services is higher, then why you would use the treaty rate? You will use the local rate. Yes. You have to talk softly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I have noticed that people take the credit without going through the necessary procedures because they have read it, oh it says 0 percent and then they apply 0 and they do not bother. So, if you can mention the procedures, it will be nice. It is there. It is coming up. <laughs> so, in this case, um, I think we will have to look into the contract itself, whether it's signed with the local one or the foreign one. This is for the purpose of the No, I would say go back to the first slide. Last condition, the P is there, but the, but the, the amount that yes. you are making payment is not attributable exactly. to the P, you will deduct withholding. Yes. I, I, you know, generally I always say when, when there is doubt, go back to the go basics. Back. Basics will define half of the problem. Okay, so this is the table who just this is not final means this is not uh, exhaustive, but a table which gives various countries when the treaty became re uh, effective, the four categories mainly that we use and uh, the rate of withholding tax that is described in the treaty, right. So, where there it is less than 10 percent are the areas where uh, you can look into.
So this is also the same. So there's no point in going in any detail here. So I'm just sharing this for you. So this is the Oman Qatar tax treaty, uh, not yet in force. So don't take the benefit. But for everyone's ease, I'm saying domestic rate in Oman is 10% across. Then domestic rate in Qatar on these elements is 5%. So when, as in when the treaty comes into force, the double tax treaty rate is exempt, which is 0% for interest and services, and 8% for royalties and technical services, uh, whereas dividends is either 0 or 5%, depending upon uh, the shareholding. No, it's not average and rounded off. It's just uh, the matter, of, uh, I could have done it in a different way as well. It's just that it's fluid in, uh, in, in that way in the presentation. So. So basically then uh, actually if you see technically uh, an analysis is that Oman companies are going to benefit more rather than the Qatar companies being benefiting from. So that means actually Oman is likely to get more foreign investments from Qatar because if they repatriate back they are going to get benefit from. One of the reasons for a tax treaty is this itself because of uh, attracting investments uh, from outside. Tax credit, so this is also important. Uh, this is just uh, reversing the way, but trying to make sure that it is covering both parts. So if a foreign company has suffered a withholding tax, which the Oman taxpayer has paid, they can claim the credit of that withholding tax in their home country, depending upon one, the local legislation, two, if there is a tax treaty. Similarly, Oman also gives benefit of the withholding tax which Oman taxpayer would have suffered for being in operation in a country outside Oman. So that itself is embedded within the Oman tax law. So you don't need to even go to the tax treaty to take that benefit. So any income, most of the income, uh, most of the countries do this, give this benefit, but there are countries which do not give it as well. So I will just say most of the countries. But then where those benefits are not given, there are other benefits that they attach. So it's how, uh, uh, this is the policy decision rather than a uh, tax law. Yes, right. So you have suffered a tax and uh, it is given as way of a deduction in your tax liability. Now very, the important element is the last part that you can claim the credit of the foreign tax only to the extent of the tax on that income which is applicable in Oman. So meaning, meaning thereby Oman corporate tax rate is 15%. So if you pay higher tax outside Oman, you can claim only up to 15%. If you pay less tax in the foreign country, then you can claim only the less tax. You, you cannot adjust with the income of the Oman entity in Oman and adjust. That will not be possible. When we are saying income, it's net income, right? Yes. Whereas the remittance or the billing can be a gross. Yes. Is there any expenses of the foreign entity that can be deducted to make the net income on that the withholding tax is payable? Is there a situation like this or how the act is meant to be? What, what they mean in the act? So far we have been, uh, they are giving the service bills we are paying, for example, AMC or something. Yes. Suppose if I incur some expenditure on behalf of the foreign supplier, yes. can I deduct and remit and then on the remittance I can pay the withholding or on the gross bill? Yeah, it has to be on the gross. So if you are deducting for uh, a genuine reason for service not up to mark or anything, then yes, you can pay less withholding yeah. tax also. Yeah. But if you are deducting for some counter service being provided, you cannot net off and say, I will pay less withholding tax. That, that's why I asked you, the, the remittance amount as distinguished from income or? Yes, it is on the gross payment, slide one, on the gross payment. Thank you. The process of treating uh, the treaty benefit from the tax authorities, um, again, it's not defined uh, in the law or the executive regulations, but as a matter of practice, they do accept uh, just a letter request along with the documentation which is primarily comprising of the tax residency certificate confirming that the foreign company is tax resident of that particular country because you are taking a treaty benefit you have to uh, provide a proof that that country is registered in that particular country. 
of course the the contract to define the nature of the service because which category it falls becomes very important and therefore benefit can only be taken then and then uh, subject to um, you have to confirm that that foreign entity is subject to tax uh, because if the foreign entity maybe is in a free zone right if therefore they are not subject to tax in the foreign company therefore there could be a possibility that the treaty benefits are not available so it has to give a confirmation that it is being taxed in the foreign country and then they can ask for other documents but these are the three primary documents along uh, if contract is not there the invoice becomes important if both are there better to provide both the treaty applications takes now it was used used to take a bit more time but now it's, it's being processed very quickly so it just takes less than a week as well nowadays except if there is some problem to a case and uh, the applications has to be made uh, on yearly basis the reason behind is that the most of the not most i don't think i have seen any tax authority issuing a tax certificate for more than one year so if you provide tax year uh, certificate only for a year then uh, oman tax authorities will also issue ruling only for a particular year yeah that's it more or less from my side so any further questions uh, how you book is not important what is the underlying transaction that is important simple <laughs> that is fine see there are elements for example ifrs on, on leases right now uh, leases has come in you you do not classify rental payment anymore and then you have to amortize the finance lease expense in the pnl it's a notional entry it's not an actual interest right so you have to go back and underline element of the uh, transaction rather than the notional entry and the ifrs has evolved over times and it will keep evolving but you have to then go this is for our suppliers like for example a supplier from india they are giving a service here and we are deducting withholding tax payment from them at 10% so like is there any possibility that they can take a tax credit in home country that is in india like is there a possibility that, that they can get a benefit of this it's not a possibility it is a certainty that they can take the benefit okay. if they are in a tax liable position in india okay so what are the documents that are required there then you have to check with the indian tax specialist okay i can tell you more or likely the same uh, documents that i mentioned would apply in india uh, okay and uh, another question is like if we are uh, if we are having a foreign in investment like let's say in qatar so we are paying a uh, certain withholding tax for the interest that we are receiving from there because they are deducting 5% interest as a withholding tax there yes. so if the dta comes into place will we be able to claim that particular uh, withholding tax that has been deducted there claim of the withholding tax that is currently being deducted irrespective of the dta you can still claim currently also yes because of the oman tax law provides the provision to claim that foreign tax okay that foreign the dta comes in hmm. then you will not have to pay at all okay okay so whatever the deduction that has been made will be claimed under withholding tax or in the corporate tax in the corporate tax corporate tax okay because you will not make a withholding tax payment right hmm. you will make only a corporate tax payment so within that corporate tax you will say say a million liability and then 500000 if has been deducted you deduct that and pay only 500000 okay. thank you sir we uh, omani company are selling a product uh, to a foreign company outside oman they are charging us a fee as a marketing fee for the services is withholding tax applicable on that based on whatever you said i would say yes yeah it is not a discount it is the marketing fee discount yes. would not have been withholding tax but marketing fee is subject to withholding tax yes that's why i said the, the way you defined it i would say yes uh, is regarding software purchase specifically with respect to double taxation avoidance treaty see it comes under the category of royalty in your slide you have mentioned there are lots of software phases like purchases implementation amc license fees for academic purpose if you take 
डबल टैक्सेशन अवॉर्डेंस ट्रीटी ऑफ इंडिया एंड दैट यू कैन स्पेसिफाई कि वेदर विद होल्डिंग विल बी एप्लीकेबल और नो फ्रॉम अ सॉफ्टवेयर परस्पेक्टिव इट इज आइदर अ लॉयल्टी इफ इट फॉल्स फर्स्ट बिकॉज द डेफिनेशन यू हैव टू गो एज फॉर द ओमान टैक्स लॉ सो इफ इट फॉल्स अंडर रॉयल्टी देन यू गो एंड सी द रॉयल्टी पोर्शन इन द ओमान इंडिया टैक्स ट्रीट इफ इट फॉल्स अंडर द ए एम सी पार्ट दैट मीन सर्विसेज यू गो एंड सी द सर्विसेज and third if it does not fall under any of these two but under the computer software itself then the computer software category is actually not defined in most of the tax treaties so you can say that under a tax treaty there is no withholding tax on computer software hmm. yeah so if if you purely define under that then withholding tax you can take a treaty benefit because there is no definition of applicability of withholding tax in a treaty so if a treaty is silent on a particular element it becomes a beneficial so here you mean to say the acquisition of software from india will be not subject to withholding if it is categorized as use or right to use computer software okay if it is categorized as royalty then you have to see the royalty now secondly the license fees like quarterly yearly they pay which is based on usage or consumption so that in royalty that, royalty yes nee but as per supreme court decision they have mentioned ki the software if cannot be modified so in the that supreme case, court of india india no, india not applicable nee 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 same thing oecd model also says the same thing yes if the software cannot be modified so in that case withholding is not applicable if because when you said when i said royalty you said you are doing quarterly payments right? that also there are various categories one is the acquisition they implement they the tailor made the software yes which comes under that category which you said just now yes one the one you are now saying is the one where it is a license once given and that's all right oh, yeah so it's a purchase for you okay and you are not making regular payments yeah this so, is one aspect ha huh? yeah so it will fall under the definition of again royalty i will tell you there is an overlap between the royalty definition as well as use or right to use computer software the definition of use or right to use computer software was also embedded within the royalty definition before 2009 amendment right like i said the rental of equipment was embedded within the royalty definition so they took it out in 2009 because it is already there if you read the royalty definition even the use or right to use computer software is embedded within the royalty definition so there is an overlap you would try to argue that it should not apply especially if it is a treaty benefit whereas the tax authorities will say no it's not a computer software but it's a royalty because of this overlap in nature yes as a matter of precedent that is the position that we have also taken but whether it is accepted by the tax authorities or not you have to test it on case to case basis so that is the service that payments you are making to that particular country it's a yes it is applicable but there are some treaties with the like uk on services there zero percent yeah two two small clarificatory questions one is uh, like uh, in case of double taxation treaty uh, certain uh, services which are like for example india services are charged at 15% but 10% is beneficial for me so i'll use that so in that case the person or the entity for which i have deducted tax will still be able to claim that uh, 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 that benefit in its own country even though i have charged at 10% yes. right yes. that is one second thing with respect to withholding tax the free zone is it treated at par with mainland from an oman withholding yes. tax perspective yes. yes okay so free zones are exempt from corporate tax for 25 or 30 years depending upon which free zone we are talking of but they are not exempt from withholding tax the logic is withholding tax is not a 
tax of the free zone entity, it is tax of the foreign entity. And therefore, when I said that declaration from a foreign entity Hello. Bharati, yeah, Deepak ji, you can ask the question. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for the excellent uh, presentation and you know clearing the doubts. I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is, uh, uh, I mean, your money company is taking uh, some services from a from a foreign company uh, for the consultancy or you know development of a project in Oman. So uh, I'm sure the withholding tax is applicable in this case, and the Omani company has to deserve the withholding tax and make the net payment uh, to the uh, uh, to the service provider, right? Yes. Yes. Now, uh, if uh, there is a change in the situation that uh, instead of the Omani company making the payment, the parent company of a Omani company, which is a foreign company, makes the direct payment on behalf of the uh, Omani entity. Now, how the withholding tax provision uh, are applicable? Because the Omani company in this case is only booking as, a, as an expense and is not making the payment uh, uh, outside Oman. But on the contrary, the uh, parent foreign company is making the payment uh, to the other uh, uh, foreign entity. The withholding tax would still apply because the moment you book the expense, the withholding tax would apply. Because uh, so the invoice. Who has to now pay the. When you got the invoice, and the invoice is in the name of the local entity, you book the invoice, the method of settlement can be in a different way, but withholding tax would still apply. Okay, fine, thank you. Uh, if uh, there is a, a board member or uh, say a consultant to the board who is a UAE national and you pay the board setting fees to him, whether uh, when setting fees in uh, UAE, uh, so whether we need to do, a, whether we need to have a withholding tax on this kind of payments or no? Uh, no, because there is specific. GCC for that. Uh, no, even GCC or any country, huh. there's a specific exclusion for board setting fees. Okay, okay. I think fourth or fourth category, right? But I in the services exclusion. In both capacities as a because, uh, so in some cases, the, he's not a, a board member, but he is a, like a consultant to the board. Uh, but he's an UAE national. So whether in that case, whether it will be, uh, he's in acting in his individual capacity, not as, I, as I a I got corporate. your point. Yeah. Yeah. Even if he's... Um, acting as an individual capacity, yeah. the nature of payment is important. If yeah. the nature of payment is a consultant payment, yeah. then withholding tax would apply. If the okay. nature of payment is because he sits in the board and you're making him a board fees, hmm. then it is but under excluded. that, uh, But under that GCC uh, agreement, uh, he is an individual. So technically, if an uh, uh, Omani person is not paying an income tax, uh, uh, on a personal income, then this is also like a personal income for that person. He's not a consultant as such. He's not a registered consultant, but as an individual, he's giving the services. So whether in that case, under that GCC uh, uh, agreement, whether we should, or it's a gray area. It's, it's not a gray area at all. Okay. I will clarify in one sentence. Hmm. And this is the main misconception many have. Oman does not exempt all types of personal income tax. Individuals still pay income tax on business. So consulting is a business. Hmm. So equal treatment, withholding tax would apply. Oman hmm. taxes business income of individuals. So personal tax is not there, but under the corporate tax, individuals, Omanis pay with, uh, tax on their business income. So in this case, if he, it's not a board setting fees, if it is like a consultant to a board, still it will be yes. treated as a uh, consultant fees and, yes. and withholding tax. Because he's be doing that consultancy consultancy. as a business. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Gaurav, this is uh, Ravi from Sohar. Uh, this uh, recruitment fee surveys from GCC country. It's still applicable to withholding tax from GCC country. Yes, it is still applicable. The, the only is that if that recruitment company is being owned by a GCC individuals and you can substantiate it, then there is a possibility to uh, not pay uh, or not apply withholding tax. But, but still I would argue it is most likely to apply because it's their business and businesses are taxed anyways. Gauravji, this is regarding training expenses. 
Uh, there are a lot of our clients who are sending the Omani employees who are here in Oman. They are sending them to European countries for, you know, getting some uh, degrees. And this is for a period of one year or two years, you know, wherein they are getting some kind of certificates or degrees from the European countries and they're coming back. Can they be called as training expenses and which will be excluded from withholding tax? Um, yeah, I think so. Again, it's a bit... So there's no specific definition for training. It is no. not one year, two year or one day or two day. No, it's, it's not defined. Okay. So uh, even if you're paying to the university for as a fee, yeah. uh, university fees can be termed as for the development of the individuals. Uh, or so do we have to ensure that the term they are using while raising the invoice on us, whether we are using the term as training or it can be even school fees or I, something? I think even if it is mentioned school fees, hmm. it should embed within the overall training, um, general understanding of the definition training. Okay. Garo, one of the criteria that you said that it is optional, no? DTA is optional. You want to take it, you take it, otherwise you don't take it. Can a Come, can a particular transaction which comes under the purview of withholding of tax, can they for one set of transactions at one point of time, they can use a uh, withholding of tax and for the other, they can use a DTA. They can keep discriminating between this and that arbitrarily without like pick and choose model. You can do that. The, there won't be any tax harassment or any no. such question mark as to why they are uh, ch you changing are the size more, from right? here and there. Not at all because the tax authorities, you are paying more by choosing between one and two transaction and not choosing one and two transactions, you at the end are paying more to the tax authorities, then nobody will question that. The same thing would have applied in India, then section 274 would have been applied as a real case. I can so, so that's a specific to India case, right? <laughs> no harassment. Yeah. Any, any more questions from Sohar team? But again, there are general anti-avoidance rule. If, if there is a specific scenario which you have not disclosed, like in your question now, and it comes to the light later on, the tax authorities can still challenge it. And I'm sure there is something hidden behind your question. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So they, 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 it, do, it does raise a question, right? Why, why it's uh, not do, being done in a proper way each and every time. You mentioned that uh, individuals do pay taxes on their business income. Now, we, we don't say individual, we say Oman doesn't have personal tax. So, if there's a sole proprietary, doesn't that fall under purview of personal income? Very simple answer. Royal decree of 2009 is not a corporate income tax. It says income tax. It is an income tax on corporates and establishments. And establishment defined means sole proprietor. So sole so, proprietor is a definition or a taxpayer within the income tax law. Okay, so if there is a CR for a sole proprietary, yes. that, that is an establishment. Yes. What if there is no CR? The, the, the law does not say that the CR only will be termed as establishment. Okay, then how, how do we, uh, I mean, because when we talk about individual taxes, we are ref referring to as personal personal tax or personal incomes other than business. Yes. Okay. Now, anything can be business income, even if I'm doing as an individual, individual, but it can also be always a personal income. Yes. So, okay. uh, one of the common um, categories to term a, a, a stream income as a business income is the regularity of its being done. If you are just done a transaction for an Omani individual sold a, a land once in five years. Yeah. It's not a business. But you keep buying and selling, it becomes a business. So I will give one very, very peculiar example. Okay, a person sits on board of 50 companies. Okay. Okay, it's personal income. Yes. Now there is a specific exemption on that WST that we understood. Yes. It's an income. Yes. I would say it's a business income um, or it's a personal income. I, I would term it as a, as a personal income but not a business income. But sitting on a board, it, it's not a business, right? I mean 50. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's 50 or 20 or I think number does not matter. I think first you have to also sense the... 
uh, this is the out of scope question so okay thank you gaurav uh, for this wonderful session uh, may, may i now request uh, subramanyam sir to please felicitate uh, gaurav Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gaurav. I request uh, Subramaniam sir and Mubin sir to be on the stage. On 15th August, we celebrated 75th uh, year of independence, 75 years of India's independence, and there was a wonderful quiz uh, organized by our member, where is Sangeeta? Thanks to Sangeeta for uh, uh, organizing the quiz on 15th uh, August, and it's time to uh, uh, distribute the prizes. So the third winner is uh, Sarita. Let's give her a big round of applause. Second winner Kalyan. And the first winner Priyanka. You need to come with the name tag, Priyanka. <laughs> Thank you, Mubin sir. Thank you, Subramanian sir. Thank you. Now I request uh, CA Sangeeta to present formal vote of thanks. It's really great to see all of you still here beyond 8.30 on a working day. And the whole of the credit goes to our speaker, Gaurav for having such an amazing session. And he has taken the concept from A to Z. And I would say that he has not left any of the query unanswered. That's really a great session, an amazing session. Thank you so much, Gaurav. First and foremost, he's not listening. First and foremost, I would like to extend the gratitude to CBFS, our sponsors, and for all the facilities and the support whatsoever has been provided. Thank you, Tally, the representative who is present here, and all the sponsors for our chapter. And uh, thank you, the caterers and the IT people without which the Sohar team would not have been able to join us today. Thank you, Sohar team, for joining us in large numbers. Thank you, Sangeeta ji. We all are live and uh, listening still to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, for being such an amazing audience and participating and making this session very interactive. Thank you all the MC members and the subcommittee members who have worked behind the scene to make this event very successful. Thank you, our MC for today, CA Unmesh. Thank you, big thanks to everything and all whomever I have missed to mention. Thank you.